Hey, what's going on, everybody? Sonic Rai 9 here. Once again, I am joined by my good friend. Hey guys, this is Party 99 coming to you live from the UK. And yes, I am finally back co hosting this channel. How long has it been? Don't answer that, I know how long it's been. Anyway, so we are here today, not because of gameplay, but because this one is a discussion video. Indeedy doody. Um, I figured, why not try and do something a little bit different besides just doing gameplay videos? Because for a while, I uh, sometimes I want to sit down, I want to relax, I want to just chill with my buds. And uh, just sort of, I don't know, talk about stuff. Stuff that's yes. current, maybe. Um, so we have got a few topics lined up. Um, and we'll go through them as we go through them. Uh, so shall we start things off with the first topic? Yep. The first topic is that there is a rumour flying around on the internet that there is either going to be a Crash Team Racing remake or some kind of other new rumour. Now, if you guys remember, Crash Team Racing was released, I think, for the PlayStation consoles. And basically, the whole premise of the game is that you drive around in go-karts, you find a buddy to tag with, and then you can work together to make your way to first place. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, you got you, uh, you bang the nail on the head right there, uh, Pudsy. Um, but um, the reason we are we're bringing this up is based on something that popped up uh, from PlayStation Asia, as Ooh. they released a survey, sort of being sent out to I'm guessing um, email addresses of people from PlayStation uh, who, who sort of subscribed to PlayStation Asia and it was basically a survey of you know choose all the games that you played and you had games like Uncharted 4, Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy, God of War and, and so on and surprisingly enough one of the options was called Crash Bandicoot Racing. Ooh. Yeah and the thing is all the games on the list have been released on PS4. Like, All once already on a different console. Yeah. Like, we've got Metal Gear Solid 5, we've got Until Dawn, we've got Watch Dogs 2, Detroit Become Human. You know, a lot of games that came out on the PS4. Yes. So, this has got a lot of people thinking that we could be seeing either a Crash Team Racing remake or a brand new Crash Bandicoot racing game that may have some inspiration from the original Crash Team Racing. Or maybe it will try to do its own thing. Yeah, if uh, this rumour does come to pass, I imagine they will keep the basic building blocks that they got from the first time it came out and then sort of build up from there. Yeah, um personally I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if it was a remake of Crash Team Racing. Kinda like um in the style of Insane Trilogy. Yeah, that that would that would be a fun thing, yeah. But I also would be interested in seeing if they could do maybe a new Crash Team Racing that takes inspiration from the original. Maybe even bring back some of the old tracks that was in the original game, you know, spruce yes. them up with that HD goodness that was in the yes. Insane Trilogy, and release it with online play. There you go. Oh, yes. Now, if they added online multiplayer into the mix of either the remake or the new game, then that would sure increase sales on their part. Oh, definitely. I mean, people have been asking for this ever since the Insane Trilogy was first released when it was a PlayStation 4 exclusive. And yes. I think this would make a lot of people happy. I'm just yep. saying, Vicarious Visions, if you're listening, make <laughs> this happen. <laughs> yes, we gave you an idea. Get to it. 
Also, for those of you guys who haven't heard yet or just haven't bothered yet, in the Insane Trilogy add-ons, there is a level, new level now, called Future Tense. I don't know how long it's been out, though, but it is a free download for the PS4, so make sure you go and get that on your systems. Oh, definitely. Or, if you have bought the game on the Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, or PC... You will already have that level already ready to play. Lucky you! <laughs> um, but yeah, um, in terms of Crash Team Racing remake slash new game, um, it's kind of difficult to say what exactly they could do new. Cause... Yeah, as I said, they could take the basic premise of the original, like, uh, same design, same mechanics, like the team-up mechanic, they have to keep the same, obvious, because otherwise it wouldn't be called Crash Team Racing, otherwise. And then they could add new bits and bobs here and there. Hmm. I actually have. Uh, I've actually had a, a thought right now. What if they could take some ele- What if they took some elements from Crash Nitro Kart? Because if you remember, yes. that game was also made by Vicarious Visions. Yes, and I loved playing it. It. It's kind of surprising because Crash Nitro Kart also, like Mario Kart Eight technically had some elements that was in Crash Nitro Car, you know, with the whole anti-gravity thing going on. Yeah. Which was insane. Um, I spotted a reference. Did you guys spot it at home? <laughs> um, but yeah. Also, one last thing. If you're going to do a remake, make Oxide playable this time around. That would be an awesome 100% bonus if you beat the uh, game to 100%. Oxide, remind me, which character is that? He was the final boss where he would drive his green um, spaceship uh, vehicle instead of um, the, like, the regular go-karts that every character drove in Crash Team Racing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. It's, it's been a while since I've played that one. And he would be the ultimate cheat because during his boss fights... <laughs> He literally, you would be starting at the starting line. The cat would go three, two, one, and then Oxide would shoot off, and then it would go go, and then you would go. <laughs> Oxide is the ultimate cheat. <laughs> yeah, the uh, ultimate advantage in a race. Hmm. So yeah, vicarious visions. Make Oxide playable this time around if you're doing a remake. <laughs> or a new game. Or yeah, in a new game that that would be that would be interesting too. I'd actually also be interested in seeing if, for the new game, maybe they could create a new villain, perhaps. Ooh. Like like someone that's maybe similar to Oxide, but not Oxide. <laughs> yeah, know. it's like uh, taking something old and then refurbishing it, and then saying okay. Just to make sure it's not as similar as the other one. Yeah, pretty much. Um... And speaking of new games, that nicely segues into our second topic, which is related to Insomniac Games. Now, for those of you who remember, Insomniac released a new one, Marvel Spider-Man for the PS4. And when it released, my God, it dropped bombs! Good reviews, a lot of hours played into there already. And my god, there was just a load of people playing it. Even Ryan himself has played it. So anyway, this particular rumour comes from within the game itself. As for those who have played the game, know that one of the features is that you can check Spidey's phone, because modern era, obviously, you have to have phones. And oh. within the phones... You can look at text messages or social media feeds. Again, modern. And keen-eyed viewers have spotted either sort of like a tweet slash Facebook message saying, hey, did ever anyone know that Insomniac Games is announcing a new game next week? And from this 
certain tweet alone, speculation has gone wild on what it could be. Oh, yeah. I am... Like, this... It's kind of hard to say when this first surfaced. It only sort of was, like, recent that people spotted this, and people are going nuts, figuring out, oh, what's Insomniac Games doing next? Are they doing a Sunset Overdrive 2? Are they doing another Marvel superheroes game Super so soon after Spider-Man? Uh, are they returning to Ratchet and Clank? <laughs> Maybe? We just don't know at this point. And... But adding, adding weight to this rumour, the uh, person who released this, well, tweet slash Facebook message does have his own nickname, but eagle-eyed viewers have noticed that that nickname is currently being used by the CEO of Insomniac himself. Yes, Mr. Ted Price. Um, so, I don't really know what game they have planned. I just hope that what they have planned, they will reveal in a glorious fashion. Yes, like they always do. If if it is going to be another Ratchet and Clank game into the series, I'll be very happy about that. <laughs> and we'll be on the ball, ready with money. Do you think, if it is a new Ratchet and Clank, do you think it would be a sequel to the remake game? Or do you think it would be a, a brand new, like, original Ratchet and Clank? Hmm. It's hard to say. They could do a sequel to the rebooted Ratchet and Clank, which, if they are, my best guess would be the remake of the second game, Going Commando. If it's a completely new game, it could either carry on from where Nexus left off, or it could be a completely new adventure. Yeah. Uh, I actually wouldn't mind a remake of Ratchet and Clank 2. That would be pretty sweet. Um, but I have also read online that they are very interested in doing a sequel to their Xbox, their Xbox exclusive Sunset Overdrive, which I have played, and that game is also a lot of fun. Hmm. Um, and, um, ah, yes, yeah. uh, I'll go on. It'll be interesting to see what Insomniac can pull out of their mystery games bag. Yeah, I mean, I actually, besides Sunset Overdrive and Dratch and Clank, maybe they could be, maybe, okay, Wild Fort with Ryan here. What if they could make an entire Marvel gaming universe, kind of like how Marvel has been doing the movies. Ah, oh, I see. You know, see you know how thinking. the you know how um, the movies have the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Where that has its overarching storyline. Yes. What, what if Insomniac could be the ones to start off a gaming universe? That would with be Marvel pretty... characters. That would be pretty cool if they actually did that. <laughs> if that actually happens you can all thank me because I came up with the idea <laughs> Insomniac hire me <laughs> and also as always with Insomniac games, uh, sorry, games we have to pay our respects to good old Dan who sadly passed away back in 2006 so this shout out goes to Dan we miss you buddy Mm, yep. Uh, um, Good old Dan Johnson. Never forget the man. He had an appearance in... Did he have an appearance in every Ratchet and Clank game? Yes. And he was a... Was he a skin in the PS4 game? I believe so, yes. Yeah. You needed the gold bolts, I believe, to unlock him as a skin. Yeah, yeah. Ah. All right. Um, 
I think now um, it's a good time to move on. And I know we have we have a particular topic for number three, but I think I'm going to switch number three and number four's topic up right now because being that we're talking about Insomniac, I think it's only necessary to talk about one of their first games, Spyro. Yes, Spyro the Dragon from PlayStation 1 all the way up to Nintendo's and upwards. Spyro has done really good for himself. Now, if you guys remember in the previous discussion vids I've been a part in, when we heard rumours of a Spyro Reignited trilogy coming out, I wasn't going to fall for it because it might have been just a big rumour. But lo and behold... They actually released a trailer for this. And I was like, oh, holy hell, they're actually going to make it. Yes, I'm on a hype train. Let's do this. And then Crash and Sane Trilogy followed up with an update that if you press a certain button, you can view the said trailer. And it looks amazing from all the gameplay I've seen to the screenshots I've seen. It looks to be an amazing game. Now, it was scheduled for a nice little early release date, you know, just usual game stuff. But then I hear from my dad himself that the trilogy has actually been delayed. So now it's been scheduled to release sometime in November. Yeah. Um, uh, some people were a little a bit disappointed because I think we're about... We were as about... When the delay happened, we was about like a month or so before the game was supposed to be released in September, which is where we are right now. But after the initial reaction of the delay, people have now sort of calmed down, shall we say, because people are realizing, hey, they're going to make the game good. They are going yes. to. They are going to make sure that they do this Spyro remake right and not have another enter the dragonfly situation <laughs> and just like crash and Sane trilogy the reignited trilogy trilogy are going to be made by vicarious visions as well as active vision uh no not vicarious visions toys for bob oh yeah toys for bob yes the skylanders people yeah <laughs> um what do you think of everything we've seen so far because it looks great <laughs> it looks beautiful it's actually one of my wishes for christmas eve of this year or next year i can't wait to get my hands on it. it i just everything from the visuals to the uh the music the fact that you can even switch to the original music if you really want that nostalgic feeling uh like i'm i can't wait for november yeah as around. the game has progressed in its uh design area my good special someone hamish has uh, been showing me screenshots of like the uh reignited characters and stuff and it looks really good they even remade the uh artisan dragons as well the uh guys that you have to rescue from the crystals and they actually have altering uh, like sort of little jobs they do like one's a painter one's a scholar I mean it's all different mm, I think what they're doing with Spyro 1 is basically in every world each dragon will be sort of will have, be themed based on a particular theme so the artisans dragons are all artists pretty much um, the peacekeeper dragons are probably going to be more sort of Maybe army focused, maybe more warrior focused, perhaps, hmm. um, and sort of so on. Which I think is definitely a bit a, like a, more of an improvement over the original. Where, sure, every dragon looked cool, but they, maybe they didn't have. I don't know. Some seemed a bit like a lot of um, a lot of the dragons in the originals. They felt like, oh, this dragon's red, this dragon's blue, and they look exactly the same except the colour, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. In Spyro number two, I have seen the uh, gameplay scene, the revisited of uh, 
Spyro entering the hub world for the first time. And uh, may I just say, re- reignited... Uh, I've forgotten her name already. Elora. Elora. Reignited Elora looks uh, pretty cool. Uh, also yeah. Hunter as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and... Uh... Yeah, um, and also a lot of people are very happy that Tom Kenny is returning to reprise his role as Spyro the Dragon, like he did back in the originals. Hooray for Tom! For uh, Spyro 2 and Spyro 3, and, you know, Tom Kenny's now even doing voiceover work in uh, Spyro 1, which, fun fact, he was not the voice of Spyro in Spyro 1. Ooh! So, now it's sort of more connected, I guess. If that makes any yes. sense. Yes, and Spyro number three, Year of the Dragon. As you know, Spyro has some companions he meets along his journey. They've all been reignited too with new designs, like Sheila, for example. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a... I just want to say a bit of a spotty subject on the subject of Sheila because... There are some fans out there who aren't a fan of the hair that Sheila has. I personally find it, it's, think it's fine. Like, it doesn't bother me. But I do, I just yeah. want to point out that, yeah, there's uh, some fans out there who are not a fan of the whole hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in terms of the whole game itself, uh, if uh, Toys for Bob are going to take inspiration from the Insane trilogy, which I think they'll do, it will be uh, you press start and then you've got this choice of games like one on the left, two in the middle, three on the right. You choose which one. You choose the game you want and then you start playing it. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, that, pre- that's, that would pretty much make a whole lot of sense also i've said it before and i'm gonna say it again if they keep those original game introductions from when they were first released on the playstation one i am going to be so happy (laughs) oh yeah Uh, november can't from what i've seen they're getting everything right but I just need to see those good old game introductions for each of them. Then I'll know they've nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so is that everything for Spyro? I do believe so. Topic number four now is Nintendo Direct Talk, which of course is their own version of Mini E3 where they talk about their games and how they have progressed. Yes, um, and um, I was able to actually watch the Nintendo Direct live. It was very late on at night, at around... um, It was about 11 o'clock at night. Um, And um, I was actually watching it with a group of friends on um, the Spyro um discord chat which i am a part of um Ooh. which was a lot of fun um and we all got to react to um all the announcements that they showed off which they they announced some surprises but a lot of it was that we all had the same reaction oh we knew about that game and we knew about that game and we knew about that game you know oh. not a lot of surprised announcements shall we say but they did have a few um what were you gonna say <laughs> yeah, so i just had a nice hot chocolate ah can't go wrong with a hot chocolate anyway what were the surprise announcements that they made well they started off with luigi's mansion 3 a third one that makes it a trilogy then yes it does we've being the first one was GameCube. The second game, Dark Moon, was released for 3DS. And now the third game is coming out for the Nintendo Switch. Hmm. And we can completely ignore 
the Luigi's Mansion 3DS, because that is just a remake. And <laughs> they don't seem to be doing much to change from the original. No. But uh, what, what were the others then? Um, like I said, there wasn't much in terms of big announcements. I mean, they had an entire section of the directs dedicated to just Final Fantasy games. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Like, five or even six of them were Final Fantasy games. Um, I myself am not a Final Fantasy fan, but I know Me, that there... Yeah. yeah. Um, but I know that there are some people out there who will probably eat that all up. Um, especially yes. the fact that they are re-releasing some of the Final Fantasy games that were actually never released on a Nintendo system. Hmm. Like Final Fantasy Seven, Nine and 10 and 10 2 which were all released on the playstation 1 and 2 ah. back when they were first released <clears throat> oh, pardon. um so that was a bit of a surprise announcement for not really exciting for my end um <laughs> and again a lot of the other announcements were very sort of we knew about them um one announcement which I was, like, not exactly happy to see was new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. For the sole reason that I am getting just a little teeny weeny little bit tired of all these Wii U games coming over onto the Switch. <laughs> now I'm just looking at a game spot right now of what they've released there. There's Animal Crossing, Assassin's Creed, Katamari Democracy, Switch Online Service stuff, Tennis Aces DLC, Civilization 6, and Isabel is in Smash Bros. Ultimate now, as well as the Switch bundle for it. And as you've mentioned, the uh, Super Mario Bros. U, which will include Toadette and Nabbit, never heard. As you said, Final Fantasy on Switch, a new non-Pokemon game from the Pokemon devs, and new classic NES controllers. Yeah, um, pretty much that was pretty much the entirety of the entirety of the Nintendo Direct. I mean, like you mentioned, um, one of the bigger focuses of the Direct was to talk about their new online service because, as many people know with the with the uh, Nintendo Switch you will now have to pay for your online meaning if you want to play online with your friends on say Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or Splatoon 2 you will now be required to pay kind of like PlayStation and Microsoft with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 and um by the sound of things, from what they've told us about this online service, it doesn't sound much better than what PlayStation or Xbox are already offering right now. I mean, you get, basically for Nintendo Switch, you get the ability to play, you get free original NES games, like 20 of them. You obviously get the ability to play online. You get... Um, cloud saving so that you can um, save your games to the cloud so that in case you I think you get your switch like damaged or anything you can get your save data back you can use their smartphone app so that you can use voice chat use discord um, <laughs> and um, the last thing is you get um, special offers if you are part of the Nintendo online service and, and um, uh, do you know how much this uh, service will come to if people want to buy it? Um, well, uh, I'm looking at the thing here. Um, this is in uh, US dollars, so we'll have to translate that to pounds uh, later. But for one month, it's about $4. For three mm -hmm. months, it's about $8. And for 12 months... It's about $20, which is probably a bit less in the over here in the UK. I'm not sure. 
Um, hang on. Let me so, do a... So, $20 is like the whole caboodle. Yeah, for, basically. For... And if you wanted to get it over at the UK, that will come to like £15.31, so say £16. Yeah, roughly around that. Yeah, so about fifteen pounds and twenty nine pence over here. I've just converted it. <laughs> um, Same. Yes. So, I mean, it's definitely cheaper than the other companies, but I just think the other companies are offering you a bit more content for their online services over Nintendo's. Yes. But I don't know. We'll we'll have to wait and see how um how this service goes it's it starts up um on september 18th so we haven't got long before they start charging us for online play <laughs> yes um, and just looking on the n4g website right now and it's looking that and i think we might have a new cho topic here because for those who play Tomb Raider, you've got Tomb Raider and you've got Rise of the Tomb Raider for the PS4 and a new one is on the horizon for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, for what I've seen from the trailer, as well as some screenshots here and there, it looks to be a good one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't really... Uh, here's a, a fact about me. I haven't really been playing the Tomb Raider game series. I'm sure they're good games. I'm sure they're great games. But they're not for me, honestly. Um, so I haven't really got much to say about the uh, the new Tomb Raider, which actually came out yesterday. So it's out. And I'm sure people... Ah, are... nice. If sh... anyone has played it yet, do let us know in the comments below and tell us how it is, and then we will look at it and decide for ourselves if it's worth buying. Yeah, I mean, it's getting good reviews uh, from various companies. I mean, IGN's given it a 9 out of 10. That is a good review, bloody hell. So, yeah, it must be good. Again... I have no, not a lot to say on the game because I don't play the Tomb Raider series, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, that's fine then. Uh, topic number six for all of you wrestling fans out there. If you have got the WWE Network already, which my dad has, then you should know that their latest pay-per-view, Hell in a Cell, is coming tomorrow. So if you have any predictions for any matches on a card, do put them down in the description. Do put them down in the comments below because it'll be interesting to see what you guys think of the different matches they have on offer. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, don't really watch wrestling. <laughs> Um, so yeah, <laughs> um, uh, and I do believe that is everything from me because I can't think of anything else. Yeah, I think that's about everything on my end too. So, um, if you if you guys have got anything else to add uh to anything that we've talked about today you know do please put a comment down below and uh you know sit there. we can sort of you know continue the conversation in the comments because that would be yes. fun and um yeah that's really all i've got to say really um so um uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. So, yes, to sum up, uh, topic number one for Crash Team Remake or a new game looks to be a good one. Room number two looks to be a good one. 
Number three, it's a little bit annoying, but hey, I agree with it. And topic number four, yeah, it's all right. It's a yeah, give it, it gets a free pass. And yeah, so I think we're done here. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching slash listening to this video. Uh, if you did enjoy it, do please leave a comment, uh, like the video, and subscribe. I'm Sonic Ryan Nine. Uh, signing off. And this is off. 1999. Signing out. Goodbye.